شيخ تفضل ان شاء الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين واصلي واسلم على سيد الاولين والاخرين نبينا محمد وعلى اله واصحابه اجمعين بعد All praise are due to Allah, Lord of the worlds, and peace and blessings be constantly showered upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad, the master of the first and the last, and upon his family, his companions, and all those who call to his way and establish his sunnah to the day of judgment. As to what follows, my beloved brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has again blessed us to be able to dig into our history. In the time of darkness, in the time of confusion in 2020, when the heights of technology have brought on the heights of confusion, where the ability to make the truth available to all human beings has actually caused human beings to cover up the truth more than to expose us. And so we are blessed as Muslims to have the last revelation, the Quran itself, the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is the final testament delivered to humanity in a form of Arabic that was never known to the Arabs and could never be duplicated again until the day of resurrection. And this book is the greatest blessing that Allah Azza wa Jal has given not only to the Muslims, but to humanity. And Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, the one through whom the Quran was revealed, he has made a very important statement. And he said, take this Quran, learn this Quran from four people. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, Salim, Mola Abi Hudayfa, Mu'ad ibn Jabal and Ubay ibn Iqab radiallahu anhu. And it's interesting to note that of these four, maybe the least known, although one of the most important is Ubay ibn Kaab. If you were to go to the average Muslim and ask them, who is Ubay ibn Kaab? Uh, where did he come from? What was he recognized for? Very few of them, except those who have been studying Sirah, who know about the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu would be able to answer you. But yet this knowledge has been around us and we may have even read over it, but not focused on the knowledge to get the illumination, to get the, the guidance of light that we need so much in this world of darkness. And it is reported that the Prophet Sallallahu on one occasion said, Ya Abu Mundar, Mundir, and this is Ubay, or Abu Mundir, tell me what is the greatest verse in the Quran? And Ubay, radiallahu an, said, Allah and his messenger know best. And the Prophet asked him again, tell me what is the greatest verse? Adam ayah. What is the greatest verse in the Quran? And Ubay then immediately went, Allahu la ilaha illahu al hayyul qayyum. He went to Ayatul Kursi, Surah Al Baqarah, verse 255. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, was reported to have then said to Ubay, May your knowledge delight you and may it benefit you. And this is a special dua that he made for Ubay that the knowledge that Allah would give to him would give him happiness, and it would be ilmun nafir. Ubay ibn Kaab, radiallahu an, Sahabi Jalil, one of the important companions of the Prophet Sallallahu was a very humble person. He was from the Ansar, the people of Yathrib, later known as Medina Tul Munawwara, and he was one of the first to embrace Islam from the people of Medina. He witnessed the Aqaba. He was there when the pledge was made. And remember, Mu'adh ibn Jabal was also there. So Ubay ibn Kaab was one of the people who witnessed uh, this Aqaba. 
And he not only uh, was there for the pledge in words, but he followed it up because he witnessed all of the confrontations, all of the battles, all of the major uh, situations that the Muslims found themselves in. And as they were going through all of this, Ubay, who had become very close to the Prophet ﷺ, he was actually uh, one of the scribes. And this is one of the qualities of Ubay. Remember, the different um, great companions, and we have the four, have certain qualities. We learned of Mu'ad ibn Jabal that he had hikmah, he had wisdom, and he knew halal and haram better than anybody else. And so the Qur'an benefited him in this way. This was his special quality. In the case of Ubay, he was proficient. He was a meticulous person. And this gave him a unique position in the history of Islam. The Prophet ﷺ said, the most proficient of my companions is Ubay. He is the most proficient reciter of the Book of Allah. And this is a great honor to be given because we remember that this book is not just a book like you have on your bookshelf, that it is a series of revelations coming over a 23 year period. And so this person in a sense is reciting history. The person is giving divine solutions to real problems on the ground. And so this is literally giving you your news. It's giving you your your judgments. And this is a special position that Ubay radiallahu anh, was given. To the point where, on one occasion, the Prophet sallam, came to Ubay and said, I have been commanded to recite this book, the Quran, to you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded me to recite it to you. Ubay then said, can you repeat that? And the Prophet ﷺ said, I have been commanded to recite the Quran to you. Ubay then asked, did Allah Azza wa Jal mention me? And the Prophet, peace be upon him, answered, yes, he mentioned you and your nesab and your genealogy. Your family tree is mentioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so Ubay then, of course, wept. He cried because of this great honor that was given to him. And he was one of the 25 or so companions who had completely memorized the book. There were people who knew it piecemeal. Many knew half, many knew a quarter, many knew, many knew chapters, because it wasn't like today where people sit as parrots and they just continue to read and read and read. No, this is a series of revelations that are coming in traumatic circumstances. So you have to be a special person that while you're going through these circumstances, you are able to take in the book and to memorize it. And being one of the writers, the scribes, because Ubay used to not only write the Quran onto the back of trees or, or, or paper if they got it, or the skin or however it was, it was to be written. But he also was able to gather together a type of mushaf. He had literally a collection of the Quran before the major one of Uthman was put together. And so during um, the life of the Prophet he was one of the people who were able to collect uh, the, 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 the Quran itself and when it was finally brought together in the time of Umar and given to Hafsa عنها, uh, he was one of the main people and he used to go over these writings that he had every eight days he would finish uh, the whole of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the prophet peace be upon him again um, there's special things that are given to Ubay and uh, on one occasion, it is reported that the Prophet Sallallahu said to him, O Abu Mundir, should I teach you 
a surah, a chapter that has never been recited in the Torah, in the Injil, the Gospels, in the Zabur, the Psalms, or even in the Quran, in the likeness that it is. So Obey then, Obey then said, yes, yes, please tell me this. And the Prophet Sallallahu then sort of started going out the door. And Ubay wanted to be sure that, that he could get this secret, this special information. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, turned around and said to him, what is it that you recite when you stand in prayer? And Ubay then said, Al-Fatiha, Fatiha al kitab the opening chapter. And the Prophet ﷺ exclaimed, that's it, that's it. They are the seven oft-repeated verses. And Allah said, وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَاكَ سَبْعًا مِنَ الْمَثَانِ وَالْقُرْآنَ الْعَظِيمِ The Prophet quoted from Surah Al-Hijjah, verse 87, and we have given you the seven oft-repeated verses and the formidable Quran. So look at this knowledge now. The verse is saying, we have given you uh, uh, the Quran, but we've also given you seven min al matani. We have given you seven off repeated verses and the formidable Quran. So the Fatiha is a special arrangement of words in meaning and in its spirituality which has never appeared in this form in any of the great texts. Even in the Quran itself, there is nothing which is comparable to Al-Fatiha. And so we read it constantly. Every time we are standing in prayers, your prayer is not complete except reading Fatiha to Kitab. You have to read the opening of this book. Ubay's knowledge and the benefit that it gave him made him uncompromising. And this is a quality now which is coming from the book. And the individual now is living this quality. Ubay, when it came to the Quran, he would not compromise with anybody. And it is reported during the Khilafat of Umar Ibn al-Khattab radiallahu <clears throat> anhu that <clears throat> on one occasion Ubay read something from the Quran he read a verse that Umar was not familiar with and so when he finished Umar then said no you lie that's not in the Quran and Ubay turned to Umar ibn al-Khattab Amir al-Mu'minin the most powerful individual in the Muslim Ummah, maybe on the face of the earth at that time. And he said, no, you lie. A person who was standing next to them turned and said, how can you say Amir al-Mu'minin is a liar? Now, could you imagine today with the kings and the princes and, uh, and, and how many of the uh, scholars for dollars, the things that they would say and the things that they would do? No. Ubay then said that I have great respect for Amir al-Mu'minin. He is the Khalifa. But when it comes to the Quran, he has made a mistake. And I will not compromise. Umar then concluded, Ubay is correct. Now this story has great implications because not only does it show the stance of the ulama, that the ulama have to be strong when it comes to standing on Islamic principles. And it also means that those who have state authority, those who are our leaders, should actually submit to this authority because that is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And no matter how powerful you are, you cannot stand in the way of the creator. People would come to Ubay constantly. 
They would want to just be around this person, to hold his hand, later on to kiss his hand, because this is the individual through whom the Quran was being written. He was one of the scribes. He would write personal letters for the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam. So a person came and said, Awsini, give me some advice. And Ubay radiallahu an told him in translation, take the book of Allah as your imam. Be satisfied with the book of Allah as your judge. This is what the Prophet sallam, has bequeathed us. He has left this for us. And finally, this book, the book of Allah, it is your intercessor and it should be obeyed. And so this is powerful advice that he has given to the companion and also given to us. And Ubay radiallahu an, he remained strong. He was there in the major confrontations in Uhud, in Khandak, in the Fatu Mecca, in, in, in the major occasions, Tabuk. He was one of the active companions all the way through. And so the fact that he was constantly dealing with the Quran, that he was writing it down, he was memorizing it, he was constantly refreshing it, did not mean that he did not participate. He did not stay locked in the mosque and just reading the Quran. He was involved in, in the major actions in the social, political, and economic life of the Ummah. So this is the person now, remember, this is one of the four people that the Prophet Sallallahu said, take your Quran from these people. After the death of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ubay lived a very simple life. And it is reported that he constantly reminded the companions, especially those who are embracing Islam, those in authority, that this dunya, the life of this world is a passing phenomenon. Don't let it seize you. The most important issue is how we are with Allah Azza wa Jal. Ubay became uh, not only a warner, but he was a great teacher. And on many occasions, you would see him after the prayers in the night, early in the morning, teaching, teaching, constantly giving information to the believers. He once was reported to have said that the believer has got four characteristics. If he is afflicted with a misfortune, then he is patient and steadfast. If he is given something, then he is a grateful person. If he speaks to you, he speaks the truth. And if he gives a judgment, he is always just. He's always a person of Adal, of Adala. And these are four really important qualities. And if you look at the success of the Muslims in the past and what our success should be in the future, patience now, look at the life that we are living in now. It is patience, hold the line, be steadfast, no matter what is happening. We are living under a pandemic. We are living under difficult economic times. Hold on to our prayers, hold on to our fasting. Hold on to our sadaqah. Hold on to our uh, activities, all of calling to the good and forbidding evil. Be steadfast in the deen. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you something, be grateful, immediately grateful to Allah azza wa jal when something comes to you. This is really important. And then, of course, when you speak, speak the truth. And that is something which is so important today in the world of lies. It is to be a sadiq, is to be truthful people when we speak. And finally, and this is important on all levels, be a just person. Whenever judgment comes, be just. If it is a father or mother with their children, be just. Do not 
judge according to the child that you love the best. If it is an imam or a leader, do not judge according to the nationality of the people or the tribe of the people. But we judge according to al-haq. What is the truth? That is the quality of the believer. And Ubay radiallahu an, he wanted to make this very clear to people. And he constantly reminded of this of them throughout his life. And so Ubay ibn Kab radiallahu an, he earned a very high position in the early generation. And this is something which is shocking to many Muslims when they really look in his life because he's not mentioned in the same way that many of the other companions are mentioned. But it reached a point where Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anh, he actually called him Sayyid al-Muslimin. He is the master of the Muslims, the Sayyid, Sayyid al-Muslimin. So this is not somebody who is from the family of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him. No, but this is somebody who the Quran has given the type of respect and the izzah, the, the dearness, the honor, and the love of the Muslims. And when Umar radiallahu anh, it is reported when during his khilafat, when the Romans had attacked from the north and the Muslims were able to open up Bilad al-Sham and Jerusalem came into the hands of the Muslims. The leader of the uh, Christians, the patriarch, asked for Amir al-Mu'mini. And Umar radiallahu anh made the journey from Medina and he signed a special treaty. This is very important because that treaty is still in effect, waqaf. It is the responsibility to protect Al-Quds and these areas and to give the right of worship to all peoples and to establish justice. And Ubay was one of the important people who witnessed this treaty. And during his speech, when he was giving advice to people, Omar was reported to have said, oh people, Whosoever wants to ask about the Quran, then ask Ubay ibn Kaab. It's amazing. Great honor he had. And it's something that we need to remember, to remember his name. Another great honor that he had, and again, he's hidden in plain sight, is that during Ramadan in the early days of Medina, when Ramadan was then revealed, the Prophet ﷺ came out on one occasion after Isha and he, he saw a group of people praying and there was somebody leading them in prayer. And he asked, according to the texts, what is this? Who are these people? What are they doing? And they said, this is Ubay ibn Kaab and he is leading people who did not memorize the Quran. He's leading them in prayer. And the Prophet Sallallahu then uh, said in words, uh, what an excellent action they have done. So he praised Ubay. Now remember in the early days, there was no Tarawih prayers as we have it in the masjid that everybody goes. The Prophet Sallallahu even on occasion didn't come out to pray. And so it wasn't until Umar's time that when Umar, because he's such a great organizer, and we are told to follow the sunnah of the Khulafa of Rashidin also, that Umar saw people praying three over there, 20 over there, seven over there in different groups. And Umar then made the decision that we should pray in one jama'ah. Ah. So we gathered together the Muslims and, and they, they chose, the believers chose, the shura chose that they would pray 20 rakats and he asked Ubay to lead the Salat. So the actual, uh, you could say, the one who established Tarawih, the actual one who led the Tarawih 
in the Prophet's time and then later on, officially in Umar's time, was Ubay ibn Kab. Amazing achievement of Ubay. And um, Ubay was an amazing reciter, an amazing repository, a resource of the Quran. And so Umar radiallahu anh, he kept Ubay close to him. He was a special advisor. He had a group, a small group of a special uh, shura, the people of the opinion that he would keep uh, around him, which is very important for a leader to have. And so when Islam began to spread, many of the great companions were sent to become governors, to be wali, in the different areas where the Muslims were now living. But Umar did not make Ubay uh, a governor. And on one occasion, Ubay uh, came to Umar and then asked him, why did you not make me a governor? And Umar very wisely said to him, because I did not want your religion to become corrupted. This is amazing insight. And you can see what politics does, even with Muslims, power, power corrupts. So Umar radiallahu anh, he wanted somebody to be pure, to have a pure resource of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so he, he kept Ubay like this. And Ubay realized the wisdom that Amir al-Mu'mineen had. When it was time now, uh, in, it started with Umar, because remember, when the Muslims fought Musaylama al kadhab many of the great uh, readers of the Qur'an, like Salim, radiallahu anh, one of the four, was killed struggling against the liar prophet. And so they say when Salim went down, it was like one quarter of the Qur'an is down. And so they realized they had to now put this together. And so they got the experts come together now, put it together so that we can have this book in a form that can stand the test of time. We will memorize it, but we also want to protect it in a written form as well. So he was one of the uh, early people who put it together and they were able to uh, come out with the Mus'haf uh, of Uthman. And that is the famous one that was sent to different parts of the Muslim world. And so when a person gets a senate that goes back to the early companions, in most cases, one of the names right in the beginning would be Ubay ibn Kaab. Ubay radiallahu anh, he was constantly worried about the condition of Muslims. And he was especially worried that the day would come when severe strife would come amongst the Muslims. And look at the, look at the insight that he had. And he constantly prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the ummah. He remained a resource for the believers until the 29th year after the hijrah. And this is during the Khilafat of Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anh. And at that point, he made his transition and he passed away from this earth. This is Ubay ibn Kaab. And remember, keep it in your mind that the Prophet sallallahu said, Take your Quran from four people. Now remember these people. Take it from Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anh. This is the thin Yemeni man who became master of the Quran. That they, when they described him, they said he's more like he resembles the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam more than anybody else. And we don't see what he does inside of his house. Number two, take it from Salim Mola Abi Hudayfa, radiallahu anh. This is a black man. This is what we would call today an African black Muslim who had a recitation so beautiful that even it would bring the companions to tears. It would bring emotion even to the Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, who loved the recitation of Salim. Number three, Mu'ad ibn Jabal. 
the wise person of this ummah, the one who knew halal and haram more than anybody else, the great Dawa person, Da'ya, that the Prophet ﷺ sent to Yemen, the great messenger from the messenger. These are the ones that we take our Quran Qur from. And finally, Ubay ibn Iqab, radiallahu an, Sayyid al-Muslimin. Remember this title, Sayyid al-Muslimin. Remember when you read the Quran of what the Prophet told to Ubay. This is something not in the Torah, not in the Injil, not in the Zabur, not even in the Quran in another form. This is a special seven off-repeated verses. Remember Ubay in Tarawih, that he was the first to implement it under the commands and the eyes of the Prophet ﷺ and then Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anh. And remember him when you have the Quran in the form that we have it. Remember this Sahabi Jalil, Ubay ibn Kab, a person whose name is many times read over, but people do not understand the significance of this person and the illumination, the light that he gave, being meticulous in his study of the Quran, being dedicated to it, and who the Prophet Sallallahu said, may this knowledge delight you, make it, may it make you happy, and may it benefit you. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would also make the knowledge of the Quran and our religion to be a delight to our hearts. And I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would also benefit us from this knowledge as he has benefited Ubay ibn Kab radiallahu anh. I leave you with these thoughts and I ask Allah to have mercy on me and you. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.